Hello and welcome along to the Route 1 show, the podcast bringing you all the latest football action from West Yorkshire and beyond. I'm Stephen Brown and with me in the studio as ever is Tim, the fact sheet. Fever, you all right, Tim? All right, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. So, Tim... You've been doing some exciting stuff this past week, haven't you? Uh, Birdie tells me that you were in the, uh, the the press room for Bratford City's last game. Uh, I was. What's it, going it, on? It wasn't a comfortable place to be, put it that way. Why? Uh, oh, because of the score? Yeah, the score. Well, just the general atmosphere around the club, <laughs> to be honest. You'd think we were bottom of the table, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, there were people on. booing at half-time, which I don't quite understand, but oh, no, I well. suppose it's not like West Ham where they're booing I when know. you won. I know, Sam Allardyce, <laughs> damn it, you. Yeah, that's terrible, isn't it? Why, Why would they boo when they won? I don't, because... I think West Ham fans, because West Ham are this club where they're traditionally they're kind of an entertaining club, you know. I, I know I don't understand they, from the like the 1960s. Bobby Moore, he was great, you know, but they expect to be entertained by the football. And Allardyce, good, solid, but is it entertaining? Hmm, you know, I'm not so sure. I'd have him at Leeds. Though, it it, it was that. interesting waiting for Phil Parkinson. We waited quite a while for him. Right. And when he walked in the room, it looked like he just wanted to Jackie Chan someone. Just absolutely <laughs> smack. You know, like... Really? You know, it strikes we'll, we'll, me as like... We'll go back to our it. wrestling days, right? <laughs> you know when, like, Triple H had just been slapped and then yeah, that yeah. face of just... And then it gets... The, the guy who slapped him just runs out the ring and Triple H is like, you know, on the ropes, yeah, yeah, like yeah. trying to, ah, that's what it was like. It's that sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it strikes me as like Parkinson could be very angry. Yeah. You need to ask Chappers tonight, why didn't he head the ball? Because Bantam, the ball came towards me and Chappers and Chappers palmed the ball away. Oh, really? And Bantam's banter behind us were telling him he should have headed it. Oh, he was getting a bit of grief, was he? He was getting grief on the Bantam's banter Oh, podcast. well, we'll get, we'll get uh, Chappers uh, questioned on that. Leeds this week, Tim, it's been another disaster. Yeah, another disaster. We've actually got a preview of our chat with Jen. I'll just uh, just listen to this preview. <laughs> She's very upset. You see, you can imagine it's been another very difficult week, Tim. I don't know if you saw any of what was happening on Wednesday night on Twitter. It was unbelievable. I was at work scrolling through. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Uh, JFH had been on the fans forum and were writing messages. I think Salim Patelli was. Lo- he was registered uh, on the Waco form and, uh, Forum as Paddy Kenny's his number one, and he was defending JFH to the hill. It's just absurd. What a, what a weird situation. I can't think of another club that's been such a disaster. Except maybe Man United now. <laughs> yeah, well, you, they're, they're taking your crown again on that. They're taking it stop <laughs> Everything lean out, try and do. You Man, know. you do better. You, you know, we had Cantona, they sang Cantona. We're rubbish, they're even worse. <laughs> stop being so bad. Uh, but, you know, holding the fort, because we're not doing very well as a region, are we, in general, but holding the fort is, is Geisley in Halifax Town. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, they've, they're, done, they're, they've done well. They're, they're surging up, aren't they? And we're actually going to chat with Halifax Town's uh, Paul Marshall, aren't we, a, a little yeah, bit that's should be a good interview. So that should be a, a cracker. We've actually got a preview of our chat as well with Andrew. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that'll be uh, Andrew a bit later on as well. So we're gonna we're gonna try and get on the bandwagon, the Halifax Town uh, bandwagon there, and also guys. Can guys do it, Tim? Do you reckon? Yes, I think uh, the the one nil win against North Ferriby yeah. uh, was a top result. However, that they did get the setback of the two one loss. Uh, no, sorry, they won. No, didn't they, they won. Listen, you know what? Halifax uh, don't lose these. Days. You mean guys that don't lose these days? Oh, guys, sorry. Do you know what it is? It's because I was watching, I was <laughs> I was doing the highlights for Park Avenue and they were 2-1 yeah. down to Staley Bridge and then it right. turned out and then at the end of the game I had like five minutes quickly to yeah. look and it won 3-2. <laughs> so, back-to-back wins again back this up. week. Uh, you know what? I'm going to boxing style put a challenge out there who can stop Geisley at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that, that'll be... Who have they got next, Geisley? Let me just have a quick flick through the uh, the notes here. They've got Oxford. Well, that's going to be a win, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well, we'll ask Colin. We'll find we'll, out. We'll there. find out from Colin. Yeah. We will. So coming up on the show, as mentioned, we've got an interview with Halifax Town's Paul Marshall, and we'll be getting all the latest with Andrew Pinfield from Halifax Town a little bit later on. And we're also going to be chatting to Phil Parkinson. It's a pre-record, but that was after their loss earlier in the week, as well as all our regular updates on the Bantams. We'll also have updates for Leeds United, Huddersfield Town, Bradford Park Avenue, and guys lit as well. And we'll also so preview all of this weekend's Premiership action. Now they find themselves in fantastic form to Halifax Town and I'm delighted to say we're joined on the telephone now by their midfielder Paul Marshall. Hi Paul. 
Hello. Thanks very much for uh, for joining us. Fresh from training, what was training like? Yeah, it was a good session. Uh, it was quite a few shape preparing for the game Saturday. Good stuff. I, I suppose the, the the mood in the camp is is really a, a really good one, isn't it at the moment? Yeah, the confidence is high at the minute. Um, everyone's flying and swearing to go. Absolutely, and uh, obviously in, in your last game you beat Alfreton. What what do you put this good form down to? Um, to, to be honest, I think maybe because we've had a little break in games and not really had many midweek games and recently, I think that's helped. With us a part-time team, um, it's given us a lot more days to recover. You're not playing every Saturday rather than Saturday, Tuesday. Yeah, ab- absolutely. In terms of, of your own performances then, uh, Paul, I, I don't know, do you, do you set kind of season ambitions for yourself in terms of, I don't know, how many assists or how many goals you score? To be, to be honest, I mean, it's just getting a team and just to stay in it and just play as many games as I can, really, yeah. to be honest. Um, so that's, I just take each game as it comes. Yeah, abso- absolutely. And in terms of, I mean, everybody's talking about potential playoffs and and that kind of thing. Do, do you do the lads in the squad talk about that? Is that something you're going for yeah, now? Yeah, definitely. We are. We all believe we're good enough um, to finish in the playoffs. And I think with the running games we've got, it's, 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 it's tough. We've got some tough games, but I, I think it's in our own hands. So we're confident we can get playoffs. We know, especially with else we've got um, on farm Lee Gregory. Who's, who's been massive for us this season and the yeah. and he's on fire and it's, it's a, I think it's a good time to stick a run together for one of the games Yeah absolutely I mean we couldn't go through the interview without mentioning uh, Lee Gregory just how, how good is, is he to play with? Yeah he's a, he's a, he's a great Not bad player. is he? Not bad he's, um, he's a striker that does everything he yeah. runs in behind holds the balls up and, and he scores goals and he, and he creates his own chances like his first goal on, on Monday night he, he, he got out of nothing really which is you don't really get that many strikers. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was uh, completely in agreement with you there. I saw Gregory playing on Tuesday night, and his feet are just so fast. I, I didn't know that his feet actually went that uh, quickly. But the second goal was enlarged down to your uh, sweet ball, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I've just I've just picked my head up and I seen him pulling on the defender. So I've just seen an area I needed to hit and. Luckily, I did, and he was there to tap it in. Yeah. Neil Aspin was uh, quite complimentary of uh, the ball. In what what kind of manager is he? Uh, what's he like to play for? Yeah, he's a great manager. Um, he likes the team to be together um, and to get on really well. Which and he gives you confidence to play. Um, he's not the kind you might think he's, a, he's the kind of manager that will just scream at you, but he's actually not. Um, he's quite chilled and. It's good to play for, to be honest. The game on um, Monday night against Alfred, and how do you feel the referee handled the game? Yeah, my yeah, the ref was frustrating myself, to be honest. <laughs> he give a few, <laughs> he give a few decisions where people are just falling over and he's giving fouls, um, which was frustrating. But luckily, he didn't give a penalty or nothing against us, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> no. <laughs> now we're asking people to tweet us in when we said that we were having you on the show, Paul, and we got a message from Positively Shame, and he asked, "Who is the best player?" You've played with or against? Um, to be honest, I played with a few players. Um, mm. maybe, do you mean in games or? Yeah, d- yeah. Someone maybe you'd, uh, you could answer both sports. Who you, who's the best player you've well, played with? To be honest, played in, against? in games, I'd probably say Mika Richards. Right. Wow. Well, yeah. Um, our, our Daniel stories with them two together are both. They were both in the same youth team. Um, that was a good, good playing with them two. Oh, I think in training for Carlos Tevez was was amazing. Wow, fantastic. That's some big, big names there. Sturridge is obviously having an amazing season uh, this yeah, year. Well, what was it about him that you, you spotted? When, uh, all well, he, he was always, I think he was just more more focused and more driven than everybody else. He, like, he always had the ability and he was a big lad for his age when he was younger. Yeah, He's probably the same size now as he was then. Yeah. And um, he's just built on his ability and he's just got better and better and now he's showing it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Paul, it's, it's looting up next. Uh, how do you see that one going? No, to be honest, everyone's confident at the minute, and mm. um, well, we're not going into the game thinking we're going to lose. No. We're going into the game wanting to win the game. So, to be honest, I think the lads' confidence are high, and we all we all fancy our chances. Fantastic. Well, Paul, uh, thanks very much for joining us this evening. <laughs> no problem. Best of luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Right, well, we've just heard from Paul Marshall there and now joining us on the line to discuss everything Halifax Town is our Halifax Town correspondent. It's Andrew Pimfield. Hi, Andrew. Evening, Steve. Thanks very much for uh, joining us, Andrew. Uh, So, we have to start. It's exciting times, isn't it? It really is. Uh, The the win on Mondays really boosted everybody at the football club because all for turn were third and we were uh, just hovering around the, the last playoff position. 
and we had put a comprehensive 2-0 win. It was that man Lee Gregory who uh, got the headlines, but it was an all-round good team performance. Yeah, I mean, I don't if, if, if you saw the performance yourself, but it was a very good well, I, display by them all. Yeah, I was unfortunately working, but Tim, you saw, you saw it. Yeah, you? I did. Um, I was just saying to uh, Marshall, and I was like, I was impressed at Lee Gregory's feet. I didn't know he had, his feet were so quick, but it it, it kept. He kept Alfred and pegged back. Um, in fact, the whole team did, and you could see in the second half how frustrated Alfredton was starting to get because they all turned up to the share thinking we should be getting three points here. Well, that's it. But when teams come to the share with an all what an impressive form record we've got, and it was a well deserved three points. Adam Smith on the right hand side was creating problems. Ryan Crowd on the left hand side, and Lee Gregory will always score goals if he gets the service. Now the midfield trio. Paul Marshall's been playing particularly well and when you've got Mike Pearson and Louis Maynard also playing well, it's a good midfield trio so we've just got this form going at the right time of the season which is very encouraging. So the big question is Andrew, can they do it? Can they make it to the to the playoffs and, and even get promoted? Well <laughs> the, the big game Saturday I don't know what Marshall said but Luton's a massive game yeah. they're uh, up at the top and they're champions elect and we're, we've got a good home record so it's going to be a cracking game on Saturday at this year they've only lost three all season home and away we've only lost one at home all season so if we do get the three points Saturday then I'd, I'd say we could uh, sneak in in the playoffs and we've got a game next Thursday night against another promotion contender Braintree who uh, as we speak they're winning 2-1 at home against Uneaton so they'll be uh, fighting for that playoff spot one of the other teams in and amongst the playoffs, Forest Green, there. I'm watching the game on BT Sport now against Southport, and Southport are beating them. So it's all very much uh, in the mix because there's about seven teams fighting for uh, the last three, four, and five places. Yeah, I, uh, I, I kind of whittled it down to maybe just a few uh, less than that. I, I put Kidderminster, Barnet, Grimsby, uh, and Nuneaton, and obviously yourselves are in there as well. Out of the seven teams that you mentioned, who do you think is the biggest threat towards Halifax's uh, playoff push? Well, I think Luton will win it, and Cambridge second, Grimsby third. I think Forest Green, although they've not played particularly well tonight, the, the pitch is a great lever at Southport, <laughs> there's puddles all over the place. But I would have thought for Forest Green, given their budget and the, the wages that they're paying, they've got Luke Rogers up front and Lee Hughes, who everybody knows, but yeah. uh, they've not been particularly impressive tonight. And uh, the commentators were saying out of their last eight games, I think uh, six of them are away. From, I think they've only got three home games left out of eight or nine games, so that could be a bit of a problem for them. But uh, no, we've got four at home, four away, so if we keep our home record going and maybe sneak a win at Southport, the thing about it is, as well, lads, is that we've got to go to Grimsby, we've got to go to Barnet, we've got to go to Nuneaton. They're all teams in and around us. So it's going to be a case of if we do get those three points, then we'll very much be in the mix. Yeah, like you said, you've, we've got uh, you got L- Luton on Saturday. They've won uh, nine away games this season. In all nine away games, they've kept a clean sheet. So do you think Halifax will at least be able to break that duct? Well, let's hope so. Let's hope Lee Gregory... Uh, it's a, if anyone can do it. That's it. The, 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 the two top scorers in the league are on show, so he'll want to uh, get one over and Andre Gray, won't he? But, uh, yeah, we're capable of scoring goals. Luton score goals. So what's likely that it'll end nil-nil? So do you think Aspin will try and keep it tight with uh, against Luton, or do you think he'll probably just say, uh, go on, go play your game? I think we've got to just play our natural game. I mean, uh, when there's... Two goal scorers who've got 54 goals, and Andre Gray and Lee Gregory, and get, get given the service. I think it's going to be a very open game. There's got to be a big crowd. We're expecting 4,000, which is uh, double what we normally get, more than double. So it promises to be a great encounter. And let's hope it's a good attacking game of football. Absolutely, we 100% concur here because it's yourselves and Geyser that are propping up the rest of West Yorkshire because the rest of us aren't doing too good. Leeds, Huddersfield, Bradford. Yeah, we, we, I mean, t- to be honest, this season has exceeded all expectations. And I know I've spoken to you before and said mm. it's been an unbelievable season. And we're just keeping that interest going. If we can sneak a couple more wins, then it keeps it going until the, the very last game when, uh, who knows, when, when we play Kidderminster on April the 26th, we won the conference title at Kidderminster. Yeah, that's... Could we need a win on the last game of the season to get in the playoffs? And uh, who knows what might happen after that. Absolutely. Andrew, thanks very much for joining us. Cheers, no worries. Thank you, bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. There we go, just playing Walking on Sunshine in the background, which all Halifax fans must be doing, Tim. 
They must be, yeah. They uh, must be. Um, it's going to be a tough game on Saturday, though. But hey, we Lee Gregory up front, 5 2. <laughs> We're walking on some shiny. OK, we're having a look at Leeds United now, and joining us on the line is our Leeds United correspondent, it's Jennifer Berry. Hi, Jen. Hi, good evening. Um, so, <laughs> Jen, would you like to give it a go of summing up the, the last week for Leeds? Um, pretty farcical. Um, I suppose that's the easiest way of saying it. Mm. Um, well, yeah, where to start? I think I've lost track of everything that has happened. Um Chilino's uh, takeover has been rejected by the Football League. Um, he's confirmed today that he's going to appeal against that. When he um, said he wouldn't. Exactly. Um, I, to be honest, I've given up on trusting any anything anybody who has to do with Leeds. Uh, mm. They've just come out with all sorts. Um, I think that appeal, I'm not sure when it'll be heard, the Football League said they'll be meeting as soon as possible, um, mm. and that'll be heard by an independent um, body. I think it's QC that's going to hear it. Right. Um, who will have sort of access... Or, uh, uh, input rather from sort of experts on Italian law um, who are actually probably the same people that the Football League took um, advice off in the first place um, in other sort of unrelated news I suppose David Haig has sort of been outed on Twitter in something sort of related to what's been going on um, not much has been said more about that and then there's a bit on Salim Patel's been found to be masquerading on a, an unofficial fans forum and Paddy Kenny's think, number one wasn't it or something, yeah it, masquerading as a, a fan yeah. um, but trying to canvas opinions off there and then there's also um, a piece by a young uh, reporter who's been basically found to um, it's all like it's almost as though he's been groomed it's quite disturbing yes it um, is. but yeah he's basically been asked his opinions on the club and, and it feels like they've been trying to take advice from him so uh, all in all pretty farcical pretty bad pretty bad isn't it um, and also apparently Ken Bates' wife if he's to be believed was <laughs> apparently if uh, loaned JFH a, a million pounds of all the most ridiculous things that I've been saying that it probably does actually top the lot so I sort of chose to admit that but um, <laughs> I'd, I unfortunately had the, uh, the misfortune of, of actually watching that interview and um, yeah out of everything that he said, I mean, it just it reeked of hypocrisy. It was I could have reached through the screen and slapped him. It was just it was ridiculous, basically. And you know, we've never believed Bates before. Now I don't think we need to start doing that now. No, no. Um, matters on the pitch then, and a dreadful performance against Bournemouth. Some people were saying it's the worst out of all the thrashings we've we've had. Four 0 down after 55 minutes. Again, no real redeeming features of that match. McDermott is, is you know, dear by the. The reasons he's given, or is it, you know, it's still inexcusable. I think, oh yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously not acceptable, and and he does sort of he gets that, you know, he he knows the sort of position that he's in, but um, you know, I think when it comes down to it, the club aren't going to get rid of him. There's nobody to sack him. We sort of we knew that, mm. um, and he is, you know, he's nailed nailed his colours to the mass as well. He's not going to give up. He's not going to leave. Um, and at the minute, I mean, there doesn't really seem much point in sacking him. It, it might not get any better, but there's nothing to say that it actually it would definitely if somebody else were brought in. And then on the other hand, if you were to sack him, who the hell would want to step into that? Mm. You know, even Neil Redfern. I mean, you question whether he would want to to even step up to that, especially after uh, his last sort of spell. So, oh. yeah, it doesn't bode well, really. No, Nottingham Forest are. Uh they're struggling, you know, they're not as bad in as bad situation as Leeds United and even Neil Warnock's rejected their <laughs> job so if you're struggling, you'd struggle to find someone who wants to step in at Leeds if Forrest can't find someone. Maybe that 20, maybe that 20 year old. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. oh, gosh. Well, I mean, they've even signed Lee Peltier so you, it must be bad. So. Well, when, when, when they signed Lee Peltier, I was like, oh, Neil Warnock's nailed on then. But then Neil <laughs> Warnock said no and I think everyone else has gone, well, if Warnock said no then... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, I think they must have thought, oh, you know, Warnock must know what he's on about here. He's and then when that fell through, it was like, oh, actually, why are we, uh, why are we getting him again? But <laughs> uh, to be honest, I mean, I think I'm probably being a bit harsh on him. I don't think he's actually done all that much wrong. You know, he, he had quite a while where he was played in the wrong position by Warnock. I think that was yeah. a bit harsh on him. And I think you know he does try his best, but uh, I think on the other hand, he is limited. But. You know, I think we, he did as much as he could have, but I think the uh, the stick that he's been getting probably a bit out of, uh, out of hand. Yeah, I mean, we saw earlier on in the season Huddersfield lost uh, down at Bournemouth. Bournemouth on a Tuesday night is a horrible <laughs> fixture for anyone to try, especially if you're from like West Yorkshire, trying to get down there on a Tuesday. 
Exactly. I mean, to be honest, it was it was a credit to the um, the fans again that they get, went in the numbers. I think it was actually the highest um, league following, um, and it was the longest journey as well. So right. we saw earlier, which is to be honest, is unsurprising, but it's still like you know, take your hat off to them. So um, we're breaking records out with this season. We've never lost a ball <laughs> before, and you know we're going to concede the most amount of goals. It's just what I I, I don't know if you agree with. I think this is this is the worst it's ever been. <laughs> it's certainly in my life. This is even worse than League One days. I think this is just just absolute hell. <laughs> at the minute I don't know what you think Jen <laughs> to be honest it, it sort of feels like that I mean even mm. sort of when we went down to League One we sort of we knew that we'd be able to get out of it eventually yeah. it was there was, always, there was always that light and there was always the possibility that we could because we knew we had eventually we knew we had the players that, would, that could manage it but yeah. yeah it does sort of feel like it's just a, it's just a black tunnel there's no light at the end of it and no. I think I said the other day the light at the end of it that seems to be glimmering is probably a train so. <laughs> absolutely uh, predictions against Doncaster then Jen um, to be honest with it being at home um, I've got to put Leeds down for a win but um, to be honest yeah, I think you know, in fairness to, to Madem, I don't think he should be using it as an excuse. But to be honest, it's, it's hard not to. I mean, it's everywhere. It's involved yeah. everything. It's involving you know every single person at the football club from the top to the bottom. So it, it's understandable that it, it will be affecting everybody at the club. So. <sighs> I'll, I'll take a I'll take a draw at the minute. <laughs> a draw, yeah, absolutely, I agree with that. Jen, thanks very much. No worries. Take, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go. Um, normally say to Jen at the end, I'm sure there'll be something good to report next week, and then we fall further into the mire. So I've not not bothered this week. I'm a thoroughly depressed Leeds fan this week. It's it's like I say, it's the worst period uh, of being a Leeds fan I've ever experienced. Relegation from the Premiership. Relegation League One. This is it. This is the worst. Because it's just if you've pure had chaos. Tweet as if you've, <laughs> tweet as if you've had worse. Um, so Don Donny, then I, I, it's. I mean, it could be five five nil to Doncaster. I mean, it really could be five. They, they have it had, could be five nil to they Doncaster. They have had too. some good results of Doncaster. They I mean, have. they won at home. Not conceding, other. They won at home to uh, two one to Watford. Won mm. at Huddersfield. Uh, won at Sheffield Wednesday. Although now Doncaster are five points above the relegation zone. Yeah. Um, they might relax a little bit. Leeds will feel still. They've got something to prove um, I think just to try and get their position better in uh, in the league to be honest and uh, Leeds won at the keep mark 3-0 earlier on in the season so you can text some sides in that I'm going to go for a Leeds win though. Leeds win right yeah. Doncaster Don 6-0 I think <laughs> follow us on Twitter at The Root One Show visit our Tumblr tumblr.com forward slash the route one show or email us the route one show at gmail.com okay we're having a look at huddersfield town now and join us on the line is our huddersfield town correspondent it's the huddersfield examiners doug thompson hi doug hi how are you doing i'm good thank you thanks for joining us doug um so it was a loss against blackpool and then uh, a draw against middlesbrough so there's a bit of a new uh, pattern forming what's what's going on doug yeah um, same old, same old, in a way, really. Obviously, a slight improvement on Tuesday. It was, it was mm. good to get the point. It probably should have been three, really. Yeah. Um, you know, both goals uh, that Middlesbrough got were, were gifted pretty much by Town. Town were twice in front. And Unbelievable. Twice goals away, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, really, a step in the right direction, but not, not quite there yet, I think. No, absolutely not. And the, the performance against Blackpool, how demoralising was it? Yeah, I mean, it was disappointing, to be honest. It wasn't a particularly good game, neither side. No. Hit any kind of good standard. Um, Town conceded early, obviously. Another mistake really gave the ball away, and, and Blackpool were able to counter attack and score. And that, you know, that gave them something to defend. Yeah. And they did that pretty well, really. Although, having said that, they weren't threatened that much. No, no. Um, Mark Robbins, after the game, Doug said motivation shouldn't be an issue, and I don't necessarily think it is an issue. Do you buy that? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think subconsciously it's always there, isn't it? In, in the sort of maybe in the back of the players' minds that. You know, there isn't that sort of desperate element hanging on it like there was mm. last season. In fact, you know, the last few seasons at Huddersfield, there's been there's been something going into you know right into the final games, uh, and so it is something a bit different and something that you know even the fans aren't used to a, at this stage. Um, so it is there, but you know, I think the players are pretty keen to to impress. You know, and I think you know a lot of them. Um, if, if not even out of contact, are still sort of playing for the futures and playing for places, you know. So there's no excuse not to, you know, not to be motivated. And from what I sort of see and know of them, you know, I, th- I think the bulk of them are motivated. Really, I think it's just one of those sort of sticky stages that you go through sometimes, and things aren't going right, and you know, everybody's getting a little bit nervy and a little bit anxious, which was you know pretty much shown on, on Tuesday in front of the home crowd. Um, 
and you know they just need a win really just to sort of calm things down and, and just you know push them that little bit further up the table yeah absolutely uh, I suppose a good point Wells got a, a cracking goal didn't he yeah excellent I mean he, one of the bright spots of the, of the mm. recent sort of dismal run if you like yeah. has been Naki Wells' form you know he's, he's been excellent a lot of good work you know not scoring goals but, but the other aspect of forward play yeah. and you know he's, he's getting his, his sort of sights back in for shooting you know and it was a cracking goal the other night yeah really good to see mm-hmm. um, it's turned now it's been one uh, one striker's gone one way and one's gone the other. John Stead has joined Bradford City today. Uh, for us Bradford City fans, Doug, do you want to give us a little bit about him? Yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, we haven't seen much of him since he came back. I mean, obviously we witnessed him coming through in the first place and um, yeah. he's an exciting young player. And going back all those years, it, it was Mick Wadsworth who gave him his chance, you know, <laughs> very much derided as a town manager. But he, I can remember very early in, in Mick Wadsworth's time him saying that, you know, he liked the look of John Stead. He was then in the a young kid coming through the academy. Um, obviously went and, and got a good move to, to Blackburn at a time when town fairly desperately needed some money. Yeah, uh, just coming out of administration, um, and he had a great start at Blackburn. If you if you look back at all those years, got uh, England under twenty one honours, yeah. um, and he's gone on to you know a string of decent clubs. He's been at Sheffield United, Sunderland, Ipswich, uh, Bristol City most recently. Um, it looked like a sort of dream homecoming for him when he came back in the summer, but he got injured in pre season and never really sort of hit the ground running. And as a result of that, he's, he's suffered in terms of trying to get his way into the into the side. Uh, uh, just to sort of rub it into some the Leeds fans out there who didn't <laughs> score the winner he's won goal since he came back was the winner. I was just <laughs> about to mention that one <laughs> oh dear what a, what a week but for, for, for League One level it, it should uh, it should be okay because he made four appearances at Oldham so match fitness won't be uh, a major issue, I don't think. No, and he's been playing in the in the development team fairly regularly and scored goals for him, you know, which shows obviously he's an experienced lad and you know he knows his way around the penalty area. Um, yeah. I mean, he he would argue that lastly at Bristol City, you know, he wasn't really played in his best position. He was played as more of a sort of wide striker, um, which which doesn't exactly suit the way he plays. Um, you know, he's a big sort of tall, fa- fairly mm. sort of bean polish kind of lad, uh, good <laughs> in the air, uh, but but quite good in, on the floor as well. You know, when he gets a chance, uh, the goal he scored against Leeds, you know, he was a nice turn and a good finish so just mention you know, it again Doug around. mention it again <laughs> <laughs> I just can't help it yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah you know I, he's, a, he's a good player he's a really good sort of yeah. guy to have around the club as well you know he's good with the younger kids you know passing mm. on his experience and um, you know I, I'd, I'd be pleased to see him get a few goals for Bradford and, and do well you know because he's been a bit unfortunate at town yeah. really circumstances have sort of you know compounded against him uh, so Reading up next Doug uh, what are your predictions for that one yeah very hard to predict I mean they've got a fairly awful home record town haven't got a particularly good <laughs> away record um, it's one of those I mean we went into the Middlesbrough game you know neither side could buy a goal pretty much and there were two in the first ten minutes weren't they? so um, <laughs> it, it's hard to predict I mean it's hard to see Reading yeah. going on such a bad or continuing yeah. such a bad run particularly having lost to Barnsley um, on Tuesday I think they'll you know inevitably a bit of a backlash you know and yeah. they've still got the playoffs to go for obviously you know they need a win fairly badly and you drew to Middlesbrough so that you drew a loss then aren't you know yeah, well you'd have imagined so yeah but you know you know, if Town can go down there and frustrate them and their fans maybe just you know, get a little bit edgy. You know, from from what we can tell from their supporters, they're getting a little bit worried and a bit yeah. dissatisfied. But you know, obviously with your home form yeah. not being great, that's not not the best of ways to do things. Um, so yeah, it'd be an interesting game. You know, it's a long time since we've been down there. Um, you know, it's quite a nice stadium, uh, yeah. an interesting side reading in a lot of ways. Absolutely, Doug. Thank you very much. No problem. Speak to you later. Take care. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. There we go, Doug Thompson. There, Doug Thompson. I just got him, Doug Thompson. There. Hey, that could be his new nickname, Jim. What do you think? It's the dog, the big dog. Uh, so. Huddersfield Town, uh, Reading. Uh, I, I, I can see actually. I can see Town losing it. I think. Yeah, well, if you bear with and me, that's not just biting back at Doug because he kept mentioning when Stead scored against Leeds. Yeah, well, uh, I, 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 the teams I've gone to uh, the Medeski this season, and mm. you know, the, the pick, teams that shouldn't have picked up wins um, have picked up a couple of wins that um, you wouldn't really expect. So, yeah. You know, it, it can get done at the Mineski, I think. And, uh, but it's going to be a really, really tough test, and uh, I just feel need to be on top, top form. Yeah, absolutely. More from the, the big Doug next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have a look at Bradford City now, and they're playing Leighton Orient next, Tim. Going really well in the league, they're third in the table. Do you fancy the Bantams to get anything there? 
Well, teams have gone to Leighton Orient and they've ended up actually getting something um, from them. Uh, to get anything down there, it's going to be tough for City. Uh, but, you know, they've got to get something. It's, they've got to turn inside. I mean, I was sat there on Tuesday night in mm. the Warsaw game and it felt like we were down near the bottom of the table, no atmosphere. Mm. Players didn't look up for it. The fans didn't really look up. Why for has it. this happened? Why though? Why when there was so, that amazing I, year last year? Why we all twelve asked, months later? We all asked a question at the beginning of the season. It was me, you, and Alex sat yeah. here and went, "Everything's going well now. What's going to happen when it all starts to go wrong?" And I think now we're starting to see yeah. what happens when it all goes wrong. People are blaming Parky, people are blaming um, players, individual players. Mm. I mean, I was at the Shrewsbury game last weekend, and some of the absolute well, just morons, really, at the back, <laughs> just abs- just having a go at Thompson and McArdle and them yeah. kind of players. Now, I know they haven't been on the best form, yeah. but I said to my brother, who sat next, I'd absolutely love it if one of them scored and just did a Ketz Bayer in front of a cop. You know what I mean? <laughs> just start kicking yeah, it. Yeah. Like, ah! Oh, come on. Yeah. So you're saying the fans are getting on the back a little yeah, bit Yeah, the fans too. are getting on the back. I mean, people people have been judging McLean straight away. I mean, I was watching him on Tuesday. Yeah. And I thought, I'll spare, you know, play a bit of a spare. Yeah. He's coming onto his own 25-yard line to get the ball. Now, what striker it's can possibly decide, score yeah. when he's having to come that far, that deep to get the ball? And Andy Gray will not been playing... I think a lot of it. I think a lot of people are comparing us to Rob the Room and yeah. some of the other teams that have come up. Um, but... I think the circumstances that we've had this season, I mean, you could call it excuses, whatever, but I, I honestly think the circumstances, Naki Wells got injured, yeah. Davis got injured, um, then Wells decided to want him to leave, uh, Davis came back, but then as he came back, Meredith got injured, yeah. uh, we've had a bug go through the club as well, Um I mean, this week he didn't. He didn't have any central midfielders. He had to play a central defender in central midfield, and everyone had a go at him. Yeah. But I was like, and everyone had a go at Parky for that decision. Mm. But you know, yeah. what can he do? What can you do? Well, we're going to hear from Phil Parkinson now. He was having a chat with our very own Pete Chapman after the Walsall game, and we'll hear from Pete in a couple of minutes as well. Uh, ineffective performance of uh, as I can remember us putting in in terms of uh, attempts on goal, crosses, etc. You know, we kind of first half we we set up ourselves up defensively in terms of discipline of the side was we'd done okay and uh, but I was just more disappointed when we conceded a goal the lack of reaction to get back in the game and uh, you know our supporters over the last couple of years have backed us to the hilt because they've always seen the team if we do go behind you know fight tooth and nail to get back in the game and uh, they didn't see that you can't blame the, the supporters one bit for Given us, uh, you know, booners off the pitch because you know we all deserve it tonight. You know, me in particular because I picked the team and you know I set us out how we're going to play. Listen, our supporters have, have backed us so well that you know they're more than entitled to, to get on our backs tonight. Do you think the, the changes you were forced to make in the field had an influence on the wider game? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, obviously Gary was, uh, you know, played him. You know, hasn't played for a while and um, you know. Doyle was out and obviously Matty Dolan had played Saturday with, with a bit of a, an illness and I just felt it was probably wise not to play him tonight um, but he's done well for us prior to that You took Carl Bennett off with that tactical or um, I just felt that you know we needed some fresh legs out there and that was it really You know I didn't think he'd start the second half great you know he, he, to be fair to Carl that he is going to have periods when he gives the ball away because he just does try to to make things happen so you know I don't want to single him out at all I just felt that you know we needed some fresh legs in the team and Hansen seemed to take a nasty fall onto his, his front and you could see the pain on his face mm. when that happened does he um, I, mean, I mean I've just come straight out of the dressing room now so I haven't really spoke to anybody about um, um, particular injuries but you know we've got to get to the bottom of Hansen's back simple as that we've got to and you know we've sent him to a chiropractor four times our physio has looked at him he said um, you know we've done everything we can and uh, you know it keeps uh, tightening up and uh, we need to find out why because we need him back playing at his best and your job now to get them lifted up and get a good performance on Saturday yeah that's right that's right you know it's uh, listen we won't win Saturday if we play like we did tonight. Simple as that. You know, we won't win if we don't find some energy and some drive. And uh, we've got to find that from somewhere. And uh, you know, that rests with me. And uh, I'll be set up long into the night with Steve tonight, discussing how we're going to do that. Because uh, we've got to find the answers. And uh, we've got to get back to how we're playing a few weeks ago. 
Um, but this game can quickly change, and you see it all the time. And like I said, you know, the, the last minute goal at Shrewsbury, you know, did knock the stuffing out of us, but you know, we've had setbacks before. We've had, you know, my first year here when we were struggling, you know, and I always talk to the lads about a game here on a Friday, Easter Friday, um, you know, South End when uh, we had a really weak team and uh, that team put in an incredible fighting spirit type of performance to get the result and uh, you know, that's what we need from this group of players now there we have it that's the Bradford City manager Phil Parkinson speaking after his team's loss against Walsall 2-0 and joining us now you heard him in that interview it's Pete Chapman hi Pete hi Stephen thanks for joining us uh, Tim said that Phil Parkinson looked like he wanted to hit someone after the game would you, would you concur? I would, yeah. Very, very angry man um, <laughs> who gave a very, very good interview, I think. He, yeah. he, he said what he, he needed to say. That mm. He didn't hold back, but he thought that the team performance had been yeah. dire and that the fans were right to boo. I spoke to, um, it was Steve Parkin that came up today, and he, he said pretty much the same thing. It, it just wasn't good enough. And yeah. they, they've got to turn it round. And the fact is that there, there's eight or nine teams now that uh, and Bradford are part of that that could go down. Mm. And you look at Bradford's fixtures, eight left, five, at, five away, three at home, and some of the top teams to play. Their, their main positive thing is a lot of the teams around them have got to play each other. Mm. Yeah, Pete, I, I, I mentioned to you briefly on um, Tuesday night, the atmosphere around Bradford, you'd think we were 23rd or 22nd. You'd think yeah. we were down that low down. Um, I mean, I've read some comments on Facebook and Twitter this week. Um, people complaining about choosing Matty Bates over Dolan. Would you be able to shed some light on that? There must have been something there which where Dolan said to Parkinson, I don't feel right. From what um, Steve Parkinson said today, he wasn't fully, fully fit from the um, the sickness bug that he'd had. Um, Matty Bates has had it just before him, and it was thought that Matty Bates would be more able to cope with 90 minutes. Um, I mean, Dolan came on towards the end. Um, so it's it's one of those things. I mean, they, they didn't want to play Hanson, but um, Ollie uh, McBurney was injured, or sorry, was ill. So they had to put Hanson on the bench, decided to bring him on because it was that dire at one point. They didn't want to. Steve Parkin said today he's definitely not in, in line for Saturday. So it's it, it probably made his back worse. And again, um, Nathan Doyle won't be in line for Saturday. So the problem is still there. It is um, one quick thing you can mention about Hanson. Is we've got John Steddin, who is kind of a similar player. But before I come to that, we I, I missed this on Tuesday night. But when Gary Jones got substituted, he actually kicked a water bottle and walked off. Apparently, which is something which I completely missed. Yeah, um, not something I noticed either. He, he came up. He, he did an interview with uh, the BBC today, I think, and uh, he, he seemed quite cheerful. I mean, everyone's a bit down, which I think you'd expect, and I, I think you'd want from a team that had played so badly on Tuesday night. You wouldn't want them all laughing and joking two days later. They realise how how badly they played. I think, but uh, certainly nothing too untoward with with uh, Gary Jones. He said, said hello to us all and said goodbye to us all. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I was just one thing I was going to mention. It, uh, my own view from from the outside is that possibly it's, it was such an amazing year last year, and this this year is it's just suffered in comparison. Possibly, I think that there is some of that. Though, yeah. it, as I was saying to Tim on Tuesday night, that they weren't. There were um, times when they, they weren't that good at last year. I mean, that certainly um, after the exit of the game, most people thought that was the end of the season. Yeah. Uh, it was a fantastic end to the season and a fantastic yeah. cup run before Christmas and just after Christmas. Other times, that they, they weren't that good, it, yeah. but they put it together when they had to. And yeah. The hope is they can do it again now because it, it will be a shame to just Drop back to League Two after yeah. just one season. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so as I just mentioned, we've signed John Stead on loan until the end of the season, six foot three. So he's a very similar play to Hansen, which I think is a bit of panic moving for Parkinson, in my opinion. Um, but Oldham manager Lee Johnson, where he has just had a spell with Oldham and made five appearances, so I don't think match fitness is going to be one. Said I really enjoyed working with John and would not rule out doing again, uh, doing so again in the future. I want to thank him for all his efforts on and off the field and wish him all the best. I think the off the field bit is something which rings bells with me if, uh, when you've got a young Hanson uh, uh, yeah. at Bradford. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, th- th- certainly that there were problems with that James had before 
the, uh, before he sort of established himself in the team, really. But I think John Stead, it, it's an interesting one. I mean, that, that would explain why Phil Parkinson wasn't around today. Nothing, certainly nothing was said to any of the press. Um, but as you said, he's very similar to, to Hansen. And one of those players that, when he burst onto the scene, he rose through the ranks very quickly, but uh, hasn't really lived up to his potential. No, no. So, Pete, thoughts for Leighton Orient, then what, what are your predictions there? It's going to be very, very tight, but they're not on the best run themselves. Mm. Um, they tend to play a game where they invite teams onto them, which could play into Bradford's hands. If Bradford get on the front foot, they can be very, very good. It's when they don't get onto the front foot, they, they tend to run out of ideas and not know what to do. No. The, the other problem is they're so used to playing the ball up to Hanson. I mean, yeah. maybe Stead can can provide that because quite frankly Aaron McLean looked lost the other night mm. he, he didn't know how to get hold of the ball and mm. um, Andy Gray didn't really give him the service that he needed No, no, Pete, thanks very much for joining us OK, you're welcome Thank you, bye-bye, okay. bye-bye. Bye. Mm, There we go, Tim so that's uh, another depressed correspondent that we've got <laughs> on the show this evening right? it's, all, it's all, things are, things are going to get better things because are gonna... Halifax soon Halifax and Guys, of course <laughs> Click subscribe on iTunes and get the Route 1 show every week for free. OK, we're having a look at Geisley now, and joining us on the line now is our Geisley correspondent, it's Colin Robertson. Hi, Colin. Hi, Steve. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, thank you. Now, it's great, is this, because we've been speaking to quite a few despondent correspondents tonight. Uh, Leeds, Bradford City, very depressing stuff, but Geisley... Wow, since we last spoke, North Ferriby, 1-0, Staley Bridge, fantastic turnaround. Colin, this is exciting times. Nah, it's rubbish, all these one-goal victories, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you see, they Not get complacent, stuff. you see. We're, we're, we should be beating, we're, we're a bit like West Ham fans, we should be beating them 5-0, <laughs> otherwise we'll the manager. <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. It's, it's absolutely great at the moment, obviously, yeah. uh, run of form, but... Um, you know, Saturday's game against um, North Therapy, mm. very, very tense affair. Um, we looked very good in the first sort of 25 minutes of the first half. Mm. Very, do- we were dominant. Um, got the goal. Um, and after that, uh, you know, you always felt that uh, Therapy had a threat. And I, c- I could not see a clean sheet coming out of that game from <laughs> Stephen Drench. And, you know, it should have been that way with the penalty. Um, and sending off of Ben Parker in the second half, it was real backs against the wall stuff. But a great save from the spot kick from Stephen Drench and Mark Bowers in the first match interview. Never known a keeper that gives you such confidence yeah. um, in, a, in a spot kick situation. And he does, he does. He was just, uh, he's just got great reactions. Guess the direction of the ball, pull the top pass save. Three yeah. valuable points. It was, especially when you consider I've seen North uh Nathan Jarman play and he is he's a big lad, he's a really tough one and uh, he, he certainly can finish and boys said the lads are all on a high in the dressing room and we're so confident we are now just looking forward to the next few games wanting to win. It sounds like they just can't wait like we were saying about the Saturday-Tuesday thing it, feel, it seems like the players can't wait and they're loving the Saturday-Tuesday thing Well, I don't know about that actually, it's um... It was tough last night. Um, it was a Wednesday night, actually, that we played this mm. week just because the oh, yeah. fixture had to be knocked on 24 hours for the Man United derby, the Manchester derby. Um, you know, they didn't want the Manchester derby to be too badly affected by Staley Bridge guys. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to, you know, um, showing respect, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, last, last night, I felt the lads looked a little bit leggy at times. Mm. I think they've obviously had a very... Uh, hard running the games and playing 10 men on a Saturday against the league leaders it's going to take it out of you mm. and even if we had that extra 24 hours um, we got into the lead but Stady Bridge uh, full time side you know and they uh, got plenty of players with plenty of energy and they looked it throughout the course of the game but the quality told really for Geisy. Um we held on on a couple of occasions they uh, had a couple of our ex uh, players in their squad and they obviously had a point to prove and, um, you know, after going 2-1 down, couldn't see a way back in it. But all credit to the um, uh, the management team. They changed it round, uh, brought on a couple of players in Danny Forrest and Alex Johnson, who were great to have on the bench. You know, players who by rights will think, you know, have got to be having a shot of a starting place. And mm. that's probably just the biggest challenge is really how do you keep them satisfied on the bench. Mm. But when they came on, 
you know, uh, within two minutes, uh, we'd gone from 2-1 down to uh, to getting a 3-2 lead. And it was a couple of moments of, uh, of brilliance from uh, the subs and, and Wayne Brooksby as well to uh, turn it round. It's amazing, isn't it? This this kind of and it's the same with Halifax as well. This kind of momentum. It's such a powerful thing, isn't it? How how good could this season be for guys? Or dare we say the P word? That could be promotion or playoffs, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or four. Um, the um, I don't know. The, um, the, the 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 position now is thick. After um, after when after last night's game, a yeah. Wednesday night's game. And that changes the dynamic. Suddenly people start looking at the league table yeah, and think, oh, that's like, yeah. yeah, you're right in there then. Mm. You know, and I, I think with the games in hand still on the teams in there, yeah. it, albeit, you know, it's one, two games now, mm. um, you just think, well, they're the team that's more likely to, to get in if you were looking at it uh, as a neutral. So that changes the pressure. There's not been pressure yeah. now. But now suddenly, you know, you we got to prove ourselves on a, on a different scale now I think in April and you know anything can obviously happen in the, lo- in the lottery of the playoffs Absolutely. but it, uh, it, 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 it's on isn't it for getting in the playoff places <laughs> Getting through them, oh, that would be a different question Yeah, that, now that will be exciting now, How do you think Mark will, will find that that aspect of, of the game of, of management, you know, it's his, his first year in, in charge, how, how do you think he'll cope with that, knowing him, knowing him as well as you do Colin? I think he just uh, will continue doing what he's doing. I know it's mm. not a particularly exciting answer, but um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's kept a cool head. He's, he's, his judgment has been proven on a couple of occasions this week, and I think that will be a real boost. I mean, the substitutes and the timing of the substitutes on Wednesday night mm. was spot on. Yeah, um, you know the times that he's changed the. Uh, front pairing around, not there's a pairing, but you know, the, the players that he's had playing up front around has so far worked out quite well. So, you know, his decisions have been good and the yeah. players that he's bringing in have been good. And so, really, you know, everything else kind of gets to be a little bit of a lottery as long as you make the right decisions. Um, you know, I don't know what more you, you could kind of do uh, as a manager. And he's, he's not a screamer, he's not a shouter on the no. bench. I'm, he gets frustrated, but he's. He's very calm, very level-headed, and I think um, I think you know it'll just be a, a real test of uh, nerve, really, going into the next few weeks. Uh, predictions then for for the Oxford game, Colin? Well, you know they've been battered four uh, nil a couple of occasions yeah, in have. the last week. They've yeah, got loads of games coming up. They're, they're looking for a, a real tough run in because they've got so many games to make up. Um, I think they're playing three times in a week um, in a in a week uh, soon. And yet, and yet, you know, that's a side that they've got some money, they've got a decent squad, and you'd think that they'll probably not be as easy as they would appear to be uh, as opponents on paper. So I think it could be tough. And, and, and to be honest, you know, to come away with three points on Saturday would be a very big result um, away at Oxford. Fantastic. Colin, thanks very much for joining us. Cheers, guys. Speak Pleasure to you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we go, Colin Robertson, our guys, the correspondent there. Very happy, Colin Robertson, and as well as should not? be. Why yeah. um, What do you think, the P word, can they, they do it? I haven't made my mind up if that's playoffs or <laughs> promotion yet. We'll go with playoffs. playoffs? I, think they, I think they'll make the playoffs. Uh, the again, hand, I, th- I did say last week, though, there's a lot of good teams in them playoffs. Yes, um, there is. So it'll be, it'll be very, very tough for them, especially with the running games. It, by that point, they might start to burn out a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're having a look at Bradford Park Avenue now, and join us on the line is our Park Avenue correspondent. It's Chris Bell. Hello, Chris. Hey, mate. You're right. Who celebrated his birthday recently? Yeah. Yes. Happy uh, belated birthday. Can you oh, remember much you. of it? Uh, yeah, yeah, surprisingly, surprisingly, more than you'd uh, expect. Good night, though. On the... You missed out, Steve, you I missed know. out. I know, I was all over. I paid the price, so I was very ill for the next couple of days. After oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. I got... <laughs> 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 You're so sympathetic, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's get to uh, down to business. Back up, you were on a decent little run, weren't they? And then Altrinham happened. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the pretty much sums it up, quite frankly. Then yeah. Altrinham happened. Um, yeah, it's... 
it was going well, you know, back to back clean sheets yeah. for, for for four four or five games. Um, you know, looking solid at the back, uh, looking decent going forward. Of course, we've got a, a you know stole a, a great win at Brackley on Saturday. You know, 89th minute, Paul Walker. Um, and you, 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 frankly, with that one, you know, I think I said last week that I thought a, a draw possibly might be the best I could have got at Brackley. Came away with a great three points. Sadly, couldn't follow it up last night. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know what it was. I, I, I almost want to say different class of opposition, but that's probably being disrespectful to Brackley, in all honesty. <laughs> but Ultrium are... You know, their their attacking options are fantastic, quite yes. frankly. The likes of James Walsh or Damian Reeves, who, by his standards anyway, is having a disappointing season. I think he's only in, you know, the low teens, shall we say, which yeah. by his standards is, is pretty low. Um, but, you know, two goals for Walsh, one for Reeves, one for Kyle Perry, three quality strikers they've got. Uh, of course, for Park Avenue, defensively, you know, conceding a goal after just 10 minutes really didn't help. They no. just didn't look quite as solid as they have been, quite frankly. Well, that's it, because you, you wouldn't associate, you know, defensive consistency with Avenue this season, but then they just seemed to find it, didn't they? And then that's happened. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, they've struggled defensively all season. You know, then all of a sudden, in, in, you know, frankly, too late, but they've found they started to find some solidarity at the back. Uh, and, and then, yeah, as I say, just there wasn't that same organisation that, that we'd seen in recent games last night. You know, it only took them uh, 10 or 11 minutes to concede the first goal. The yeah. second came not too long after. They managed to pull one back before half-time through Jordan DC. Uh, you know, good move, uh, good good run and finish, but, he, you know, it was deflected and, you know, that left Stuart Coburn helpless, really. Yeah. But you looked at that and thought, ah, oh, well, they've got one back before half-time. We can do this. Um, and, you know, Ch- Chib said to me after the game that at half-time the boys were all optimistic and thinking, look, you know, we're back in this, we can come through this. I like that, Chibs, <laughs> like Chris's best mates with Chib Chalaka now. <laughs> you two have got, I, I, when I was at the game with you the other day, you went, all right, Chibs, he was like, all right, Chris. I'm like, hey, up, <laughs> showbiz pals. Um, and, but then, you know, second half, it, it just didn't really materialise. Ultrium really, you know, asserted yeah. their dominance. The sending off as well for, for Ryan Coulter was, it, it was the right decision at the end yeah. of the day. You can't, uh, Paul took somebody back and and you know uh, when he threw on goal and not receive a card for it. I suppose no. the the one um, kind of saving grace to an extent is that if you, if you think about you know why he brought him down and when he brought him down, yeah. he made the right call by receiving the red card then outside the box rather than, you know, letting him get any further, shall we say. Yeah. You know, from a, a not, you know, from the point of view that if he was going to make the foul, he made it at the right time and took the red card at the right time, rather than giving away a penalty as well or or letting him go through and, and, and score kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which, from a player of, of Ryan Coulter's age, of course, you know, is, is quite a mature thing to do. That's, again, you know, that's what, <laughs> that's what uh, you know, Jim, Jim said in the interview, which, of course, we had to hear. Uh, before the game on Saturday at home to Brackley. Yeah. Um, but generally, it was quite a... a, 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 a it's the problem I've got now, though, is it's another red card. It's You're looking at least two or three games suspension yeah. for Ryan Coulter. James Knowles has got too much ban starting on Saturday as well uh, due to picking up 10 yellow cards this season. Overall, he's missed 10 games this season through suspension. John DC told me after the yeah. game, and he was very, very displeased, shall we say, with yeah. that... Um, uh, and of course, I think Nathan Hart as well. I've got a feeling that he may be out um, for a couple of games. He went off injured after half an hour yesterday. We he's know been struggling he's been for a while, hasn't not, he? Yeah, we know he's been yeah. struggling with that injury for a while and just been playing through it, quite frankly. Mm. Um, but it looks likely that that may have just caught up with him, frankly, and he, he's going to miss a couple of games anyway. Yeah, I expect. Um, so, so you know, it's it's going to be a difficult situation. You know, I, having spoken to, to to John after the game last night, uh, I basically quickly touched on the fact that he's they brought in Spencer Harris earlier this week, a, a centre half who's coming from from well from coming from Guiseley and Buxton where he was on dual registration, and I basically said to him, given the the, the, the centre half problem he's got now, it was just in the nick of time, and he said, yep, yeah, exactly that. It's, <laughs> Coming just the right just time, the right given spot. the situation, but it's not a situation that I think Spence Harris is going to find himself. <laughs> Talk about being thrown into the deep end somewhat. Absolutely. So the the next game, then Chris Brackley. How do you see that one going? 
it's a difficult one to call because you you know when you play a side so soon after last playing them, it's it's a tricky one. Um, you know, you've got the advantage of of knowing uh, what what your opposition have got, but you've got the disadvantage of the opposition knowing exactly what you've got. Basically, <laughs> yeah, um, it's a going to be a, a tough one. Of course, Brackley lost the first game, or the, the, the tie last Saturday by goal to nil. You'd think they'll be wanting some form of revenge. They'll know, though, what they they may have to do to try and get round Parker. And you obviously, with the loss of Coulter and, and Knowles, um, etc., that's uh, going to make things interesting as well. <sighs> you, you, you want to look at it. In fact, well, they've beaten them away from home. They should be able to beat them at home. But then you can chuck in all kinds of factors, like the, the pitch that we've talked about all season long. Um it's going to be uh, an interesting game with mm. Knowles being out in particular at the back. It's going to have to be a bit of a reshuffle as well with injuries. You, you'd think with the squad that's available to John DC, you'd probably take a draw. Something mm. like a 2-2 I'll go for. Something like a draw. Good stuff. Chris, thank you very much, mate. No problem at all, mate. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we go, Tim. That's Chris Bell on Park Avenue. Gates Brackley Town. I, I, I think they may get back on track myself. What do you think? Um, I think Brackley might be out to try and get uh, a bit of revenge, especially as they're still pushing for the playoffs. And let's let's face it, last weekend against uh, Brackley Park, I mean, you did Geisley a favour in uh, in that one. But um, ah, I'm going to go for a draw. I think draw. I, I do think I don't think they'll get the three points. No, I remember you can listen to full match coverage on BCB 106.6 FM. You're listening to the Route One Show, covering football in West Yorkshire and beyond. Right, let's have a look at the Premiership action this weekend and we're going to look towards the bottom end of the Premiership yeah. this week because there's a lot of important fixtures and it's it's really heating up down, down there, Tim. Let's start with, well... You can only look at West Brom versus Cardiff, can't you, on uh, on Saturday, the three o'clock kickoff. Cardiff, can they do it? I mean, 25 points are sitting on there, their team. West Brom, for me, look vulnerable. How do you see that one going? I think uh, West Brom are extremely vulnerable. I think mm. the thing that will probably help them out, though, is their goal difference is only minus 12, whereas Cardiff is uh, minus 32. Um, but again, <laughs> if Cardiff do it... yeah. Solskjaer, give him the man new job. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> there we go. Um, elsewhere, Sunderland in action against West Ham on Monday. Uh, that's the Monday kickoff. Um, Sunderland for me are going to do it. I think, although they're running out of games in hand, aren't they? They but are they good against Liverpool. Though second half, Sunderland, the, the one of them teams where you, for the past couple of months. You think, you know what, they're doing well. They've got all these games in hand, they're going to get out of it. Mm. They haven't won since the 1st of February. I think all these cup games had hidden what was really lying underneath with the Premier League. Uh, But Crystal Palace and West Brom, you know, Mm. I mean, Crystal Palace got a kick in the teeth against Newcastle last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But, which, so technically, Newcastle did Sunderland a favour there. Yeah. but I, I, I can I can still see Sunderland getting out of it. Yeah. Well, you've just mentioned Crystal Palace there against Chelsea. Can't see him getting anything there, can you? No, I can't. No, I mean, you know, they've conceded an average of one point three goals per game this season, and I think with Chelsea starting to no help of yeah. Opta. Can I just make our listeners aware <laughs> he, he was bragging before because he has had no help from Opta this this week? Have you? Uh, I've had a Pure little bit of help sheet. for. Crystal Palace, no. I've, uh, <laughs> I've used other sources. But, other um, sources. No, Chelsea are on, starting to get into that run of form, uh, especially up front, which is where they've been struggling uh, yeah. all season. They seem to be finding some ease yeah, there now. Absolutely. So it's dead dead tight at, at, at the bottom there. Just briefly mentioned, because it's a, a game at the, the top of the table, uh, Arsenal versus Manchester City. Are Arsenal going to get another pasting? Um, yeah. I think so. Uh, I think the confidence Man City will have taken from uh, Tuesday night against Manchester United will just go straight into the Arsenal game. Um, although Arsenal have seemed to have managed to have avoided a couple of uh, disciplines there, haven't they? Yeah. I think Oxley Chamberlain isn't <laughs> hasn't been banned. Yeah. Oh, you um, know, I was going to say we were going to have to make some Kieran Gibbs jokes. <laughs> on air, but we've 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 forgot it, haven't we? Never mind. If there was any crapness in this week's show, blame Gibbs. It's too late now. Too yep. late for all that. Yep. Uh, final question for you, Tim. Uh, before we end the show, can Liverpool win the title? 
Yes. Will Liverpool win the title? No. <laughs> so I sneaked another question in there. I don't think so, no. Um, for me, a lot of people are mentioning Man City because of the amount of games they've got in hand. Mm. Uh, Liverpool, maybe not this season, but definitely next season. And people are talking about if Liverpool don't win the title, it's a failure. F- for me, just no. breaking that no. glass ceiling into the top four. Absolutely. I mean, I think that step by step, yeah. you know. Uh, but Liverpool fans are loving it at the moment. Liverpool's yeah. loving it. I think but they've got a lot of people on their side out there. I think I, I am. I, I'd like to see Liverpool win the title, definitely. I, I'd like to see someone different yeah. like Liverpool win the title. However, and without just Mourinho's on. been in this position yeah. in lots of different Mourinho. countries, in lots of different situations. I think he might just have enough to seal it for Chelsea. I think you might be right. I think you might be right. Oh, uh, before we go, oh. we should mention the website. Yes. It's now up and running. It if is. If you would like to go visit, uh, we will have interviews on there. We've got the uh, yeah. latest blogs on there. Um, yeah, we're going to have all our interviews up, hopefully, by this time next week, aren't we? By this time next week. Blackwell, Richie on. Humphreys. Yep. PFA chairman there. Yeah. Um, probably have Paul Marshall's interview from this week, maybe, on there as well. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, them all. We'll, we'll be writing blogs on there. I wrote uh, one about Andre well, Mariner. Uh, oh, well, you can subscribe. And uh, Well, my Leeds blog, you said, oh, why do you write that? I said, yeah, I'm writing a Leeds one. I got halfway through, and then the madness of <laughs> Tuesday Wednesday happened, and I was just like, I basically have to research the entire thing all over again, because I was going to do a brief thing about Chilino failing the Football League test. No, that wasn't enough. It all went... Well, well, you can write. I won't say you, it. You can write an appeal for him. Bleep and say, yeah, well, some people have done that on Facebook. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, your lot for this week on the Route One Show. I've been Stephen Brown, and with me has been Tim Feather. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Follow us on Twitter at The Route One Show. Visit our Tumblr, tumblr.com forward slash The Route One Show, or email us, theroutoneshow at gmail.com.